Hello, welcome back to the shed and today I'm going to be taking a look at some very early LED calculators and mainly uh, this rather nice example which is a 1976 Sinclair Sovereign as I say, introduced in 1976 by Sinclair Radionics um, patriotically named the Sovereign uh, mainly for the Queen's Silver Jubilee which was at the following year, 1977 and this is uh, one of the last Sinclair calculators and uh, very much aimed at the high end of the market like a lot of Sinclair products, you know, tend to be sort of not so much mass produced but uh, certainly aimed at the elite end of the market and it's a very nice design, very sleek it uh, con consists of an all metal body casework which is uh, quite nice and I say quite a futuristic, very slim design of its time um, actually designed by John Pembleton who won a Design Council Award for its design and uh, even today it looks actually really sort of quite nice as I say one of the last Sinclair calculators um, it's an 8 digit red LED calculator which uh, strangely enough rather like a lot of other Sinclair products it was already obsolete really um, whilst it was being produced the main reason being that the uh, LED display on this calculator and uh, certainly the others here I've got on the desk today um, pretty much very power hungry and uh, this, this calculator in particular because of its very slim size used two of these little mercury button cells the, uh, the old PX625s um, which of course these are now obsolete and banned due to the environmental issues of disposing of mercury oxide and uh, so this calculator would have to calculate had two of these fitted in the back here and Sinclair claimed a consistent use of 20 hours which uh, they reckon that uh, over a typical use you would maybe looking at maybe two weeks before you then had to replace your batteries of course by that time more sort of modern LCD calculators were coming along which had a very less power hungry display and typically your LCD calculator with probably double A's or 9 volt battery could last up to 6 months and obviously the batteries were cheaper and more widely available so unfortunately um, technology once again you know, over overtook Sinclair before <coughs> he really got off the ground and uh, it's a shame because so this, this calculator when it was introduced in 1976 sold for £30 which was quite a bit of money really, that's probably get for two weeks average wages and uh, after only a short time he was uh, unfortunately already selling these at a loss so it uh, probably wasn't particularly uh, a great financial sort of success for Sinclair very much like a lot of his other products but I, I do like Sinclair products, you know I do find them very, uh, very stylish and very sort of uh, modern for their time so as I say, it's, um, it's got a very bright 8 digit LED display which I'll be able to dim the lights down a little bit and show you later on. Um, quite a basic calculator really. It has uh, four primary functions including percentage, memory, square and square root. And like I said it has a rather nice solid pressed steel casework which uh, did make it quite easy to actually have this plated in different materials and uh, it was sold in various forms. This, this one here is the matte satin silver finish. Uh, it had a bright silver chrome finish as well and also a rather nice gold chrome finish. Uh, followed by finally a matte black finish which uh, looks quite sort of modern. And I do believe there was actually two solid gold models actually made. Um, but I've never actually seen those actually on the internet or anything. And finally um, in 1977 there was a very nice bright chrome silver jubilee edition which came in rather a nice presentation box and actually had an embossed um, silver jubilee crest on the bottom just there. So that was, that was, rather, that was rather nice. Um, this model I have here um, I actually bought this from a retired doctor and uh, he hadn't actually used it for a number of years because uh, batteries had worn out and he upgraded to a more modern calculator and unfortunately this actually lay in the bottom of his briefcase 
and you can continue to carry it around for a few years. So I thought you're my example here, you can just make out that quite a few of the actual numbers and digits basically got worn off whilst the calculator was uh, in his briefcase. And that's a little unfortunate, but it's still uh, it's just a perfectly usable example. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just dim the lights down now and uh, see if I can sort of show you the display. So there we go, here is the uh, display, so it's difficult for the camera to actually get a good clean focus. But it is actually a very nice, bright, sharp LED display and uh, you know, I quite like these LEDs, I think LEDs look really rather nice actually, I'm getting rather close there, there you go. And as I say, this calculator still fully functional, a bit with a few of the actual uh, sort of numbers worn out. and. Uh, Still quite nice today, really. Um, this one came in a um, standard presentation box with the operating instructions and a little kind of fake leather wallet. Um, some of the other examples, certainly the um, bright chromed finished silver and the uh, bright finished gold, come in a rather nice wooden kind of like solid wooden casework box with a leather actual sleeve, and uh, they're, they're rather nice indeed. Um, it's, I brought these other ones in just to sort of kind of give an example of you know what was around at the time to sort of actually appreciate how nice this actually was. I mean, you know, typical um, cheaper calculator like this uh, Prince Tronic one here, around about the sort of around about the same sort of era, you know, and, and there really is no sort of you know comparison. I mean, you know, sort of a business meeting, you get something like this out of your pocket, and uh, someone else slides out a sovereign. And uh, there really isn't any great sort of comparison, really. And uh, that's you know that's really about it. I mean, they're very collectible today. Um, you will find these do come up on eBay. Um, I won't really comment on prices. I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, they tend to be what people are prepared to pay. The um, high sort of bright chrome silver and the gold ones are actually sort of more popular than the uh, the satin finish. And uh, of course, the actual silver silver jubilee ones also are quite popular. But uh, still, something quite nice to collect. To so say, me personally, I, I bought this actually at a flea market from a retired doctor who was just clearing out his stuff, and uh, I was quite pleased that he managed to uh, keep the rather nice case and all the instructions intact, even though the calculator itself had quite a bit of hard use. And I believe I paid five pounds for it, so uh, I was actually quite quite pleased at that and uh, there you go and uh, that's it I mean I, I, I quite like you know these old sort of LED type calculators I mean I, I find them quite fascinating really I mean you know just briefly this this one here this this castle calculator quite often you do end up getting a case and sort of instructions and this is a financial model and you really do need some kind of mathematical degree to try and understand all of these uh, rather complicated instructions. It's rather like programming a spectrum or something. Um, but it's supposed to work out your tax and everything else and uh, it's you know quite a nice sort of solid chunky thing. So I think these are quite collectible. Um, calculators sort of you know like this pick these up on eBay probably between five and ten pounds. Another sort of early Casio version here. Not you know quite easily available. One thing I'll finally say, as I say, mentioning the uh, little button cells that the uh, Sinclair takes and the options that you've got today. So I'll just uh, zoom the camera in slightly. Okay, this is the uh, standard Mercury battery which the um, Sinclair originally used. It's a PX, PX625. It's well sometimes called a mushroom battery because it has this rather odd sort of like mushroom type shape. Um, as I say, these are actually banned now due to environmental issues. Um, they were used in a whole host of certain uh, products from the sort of 70s, certainly light meters and cameras, um, calculators, watches, uh, hearing aids. And the reason being is, is that they have, from the whole of their life cycle, I believe right down to the very last 5% of their life cycle, they have a very, very flat very flat consistent voltage output of 1.35 volts um, which is for things like calculators and things like cameras is quite ideal in, in fact uh, I know of certain few cameras that uh, didn't even actually have any regulation um, hardware they just purely used the steady voltage 
off the battery. So like I say, these now are banned, you can no longer buy these. Um, to use with the calculator, there are equivalents available. Um, what I found was I found that these little uh, button cells, these are little AG13 alkaline button cells, um, they are rather smaller, certainly in diameter and slightly in size, so I, I found that uh, these little spacer discs come in quite handy where you can just sort of slide them under the button and uh, they sort of seem to work in the calculator quite well. Um, being alkaline, these uh, the voltage actually does drop as the uh, battery cycle sort of diminishes. Um, so I'm not quite sure how that would have an effect on the uh, accuracy of a calculator. I know it affects the exposure on a camera. But unfortunately, due to the fact that these are obsolete, um, that's really your sort of uh, only choice. So there we go, that's the uh, 1976 Sinclair Sovereign and uh, that makes a little bit of change from cameras. So as I say, if you're into, into calculators or you want something a little bit retro, I'd uh, thoroughly recommend that uh, you get yourself one of these um, while you still can and uh, while they're still available. Okay, I'm Fred, you're in the shed and uh, thanks for watching.